Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, November 27. A new national identification bill is likely to be tabled in Parliament by the end of March 2020. Prime Minister Andrew Holness made that announcement in the House of Representatives yesterday. He said a review of the bill should be completed within two weeks. In April, the Supreme Court struck down the National Identification and Registration NIDS Act, stating that certain aspects of the legislation breach the rights of Jamaicans' privacy, as is guaranteed by the Constitution. According to Mr. Holness, the administration's goal is to issue new drafting instructions with strengthened oversight and security provisions by January 2020. In that vein, he revealed that on November 11, Cabinet approved the First Amendment to the NID Solution contract to execute activities not directly related to the ID system. These provisions were outlined in the contract awarded to the Productive Business Solutions, PBS Limited. The First Amendment will allow the project team to focus on the ICT upgrade activities until a new national identification and registration bill is tabled. The government decided to focus on the initial ICT upgrade to address urgent needs at PICA and RGB. The remainder of the contract is to cover new systems and infrastructure upgrade and the implementation of the national identification system. However, these activities will not be executed until a new national identification and registration bill is tabled. The NIDS project is broken up into two major activities. The first is ICT infrastructure upgrade, which accounts for 80% of the IDB loan agreement. There is also the national identification component, which accounts for 20% of the NIDS project loan. Agriculture Minister Audley Shaw has welcomed a new hemp farm in Lennox Big Woods, Westmoreland, which he says will help to establish Jamaica as a world leader in the medicinal hemp and cannabis industry. Ground was recently broken for the 113-acre hemp farm, which is being spearheaded by wellness firm Virtudes Company Limited. The company, which has invested $1 million U.S. dollars in the venture, received licenses to cultivate and manufacture hemp-based products such as hemp flour and CBD oils. Minister Shaw says industrial hemp will not be considered in this process due to the risk it poses to our indigenous ganja. Feminized hemp. Medicinal hemp is what we have approved. And we will equally have frequent monitoring by our enforcement and monitoring officers of the Cannabis Licensing Authority to ensure compliance with the policy and the absence of male or herma hermaphrodite hemp plants. He adds that protocols are being established to allow for a 4 to 10 mile buffer between a medicinal hemp site and a formal ganja cultivation site. In the meantime, 35 farmers from the community are employed on the farm in Lennox Big Woods, which is expected to yield its first harvest by March 2020. American Airlines will be sending 15 flights into Montego Bay St. James every Saturday starting in December. This new air services arrangement represents a record for any single carrier operating in the country. The recent announcement was made during a welcome reception for the resumption of American Airlines' daily service from New York's John F. Kennedy Airport to the Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says this new arrangement signifies the strength of the relationship between Jamaica and one of America's most prestigious airline carriers. This reintroduction of service, therefore, will augur very well for us um, as a destination. I know also that that connectivity will enable us to link with other um, destinations out of Europe, out of uh, Asia, and also out of South America. And we're excited about that. American Airlines has an estimated 200 million customers. It operates approximately 6,800 daily flights to more than 365 destinations in 61 countries. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is advising the public to take precaution during the current influenza or flu season. The flu season generally runs from October to late May, with cases peaking between December and March. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa mckenzie is appealing for persons to take flu-like symptoms seriously and to visit their doctor or health center if symptoms arise. She points out that the flu can lead to pneumonia and blood infections and can cause severe symptoms such as diarrhea and seizures in children. The flu can worsen chronic medical conditions such as heart or lung disease. 
Persons at highest risk of dangerous complications from the flu are infants and young children, adults 60 years and older, pregnant women, and persons with chronic medical conditions or weakened immune systems. Influenza, commonly referred to as the flu, is an acute viral infection that spreads easily from person to person, mainly by coughing, sneezing, and through close contact. Symptoms may vary by age and include fever, chills, sore throat, muscle aches, fatigue, cough, headache, and runny or stuffy nose. We want to remind members of the public to practice good hygiene, including washing hands with soap and water and covering the mouth and nose while coughing or sneezing which will help to prevent the transmission of the virus. The flu vaccine is available free of cost in the public health system to high-risk members of the population. This includes healthcare workers, children and the elderly, persons with chronic illnesses, pregnant women, individuals who are institutionalized or in state care, and non-health frontline workers. And finally, Minister Without Portfolio in the office of the Prime Minister, Mike Henry, says he will not back down from his push for reparation for the descendants of enslaved Africans. He highlights that slavery caused not only physical and emotional harm, but the act also had far-reaching effects on Jamaicans. Mr. Henry argues that Jamaicans need acceptance of the moral wrongness of the slavery system. We acknowledge the harm that was caused, recognition that continuing impact in our life today confession of the immense benefits gained by European countries, and of course, full and final monetary compensation to Jamaica. Minister Henry made the declaration during the ninth staging of the JIS's annual Heritage Competition Award ceremony on Monday. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.